is your boy, Classic Kalo, better known as Carl, and I am coming from you live from my movie room. And uh, today I want to talk about a subject that is a little bit uh, sad but true. It goes with the history of movies in, in America, the system of racism that that stopped a lot of great actors and actresses from becoming who they really were. And I'm speaking of people of color, of course. This actress today, her name is Teresa Harris. Teresa Harris appeared in with more stars of the golden era of Hollywood than anyone else. She sang, she danced, she appeared in TV, she graced the screen with her magnetic presence. She's very beautiful. And she was in over 90 movies. Often when she was in these movies, she was in them uncredited with lines. She had parts. But so many times in the era of systematic racism, we as people of color were often in these movies with uh, nameless, you know, no credit whatsoever. The same thing happened in other parts of the uh of the world as well as in the world of science. You know, there's a lot of inventions that uh, people of color didn't give credit for. And in radio, you know, we had to have separate uh, radio stations. A lot of our songs were stolen by white artists. And I mean, they didn't give them credit for that. This today's day, it's called a cover, but that's not what was going on in those days. So here we have Teresa. Now, the problem with Teresa is that not that she's not a good actress or that Hollywood didn't want her, she didn't fit the mold. Whenever Hollywood wanted a black actress, they wanted a Louise Beavers or a Hattie McDaniel type, and they wanted them to play a maid. Here we have Teresa Harris, very beautiful black woman, beautiful hair, beautiful skin, very shapely, and so there was no roles for her. You know, and you know how the story went for actresses like Lena Horne. Although Lena Horne was signed to MGM uh, Studios, they often just did little segments of her singing. And those segments were put in movies so they could easily cut her out of the movie. So Lena, even though she was an MGM star, they didn't give her any roles that she really could call magnanimous, magnanimous roles. I mean, of course, there was all black versions of Cabin in the Sky and uh, Stormy Weather, those movies, all black movies, but no female actress really was able to play anything other than a domestic. Okay, so Teresa, she had kind of a reputation of being a little bit, they called her uppity because she was demanding respect for these roles and she just wanted to be an actress. So she ended up always getting a part of the maid or the comic relief maid, and it was usually a part that was not credited. Now, there was one movie, and this is where I came to know her, and that was the movie with Barbara Stanwyck called Babyface. She played Chico, who happened to be just a good friend of Bar uh, Barbara. She wasn't shown that she was a maid. She was able to be sassy and speak her mind, as so though she was just a friend, and she wasn't painted in the maid. And this was a pre-code movie in 1933. So that was the only time where she had equal screen time, which was very rare between black and white actors at that time. So playing Chico uh, Stanwyck's friend and coworker gave her a moving and memorable performance that contributed to the film being one of the essentials of the classic genre. So that was rare. So what I want to do now is I want to show you a little clip that I got. Uh, it was sponsored by Turner Classic Movies. It was about the, unfor the unforgotten stars of Hollywood. And let's look at a little bit about her and see some of the roles that she did. And we'll come back. <laughs> Not a word to anyone understand. I sure do understand, Miss Julie. It's just like I was struck stone dumb in both my ears. Well, go on.
like I feel today. Sweet daddy, even the clock keeps ticking. Daddy, won't you please come on? Daddy, do you have to roam so very long? There's lots of other new sheets we like to be seeking. Heaven's a jet bottom. Wasn't that pretty spectacular? I mean, you know, it's kind of sad. Um, here it is, 2021, and we're just now coming into our own. If, if I know a lot of you have streaming services and you're noticing that there are a lot more black television shows, movies, there are black actors in part that they never, but we had Black Bridgerton. Can you believe that? So Hollywood is just now in 2021 trying to do things right you know and um i know that in this climate that we're in where we are really trying to find our place in america that it accepts all people and give everybody a place at the table it's been a struggle for people of color i mean asian actors latino actors black actors lbgtq actors women there are a lot of things that have not been fair in this country and it was a system it was designed to keep people of color back so what i want to do is show those rare times when there were some actors who really paved the way for a lot of the actresses that we have today you know uh teresa got a lot of flack for playing maids you know she was known as the maid of hollywood so, and she took on parts, I mean, 90 movies. That's a lot of movies for any actress, but she had parts. She had speaking parts. There was one movie, you know, I can't remember. I think it was the Betty Davis movie, Jezebel. Jezebel, I think it was Jezebel, when she played a maid in that movie. And I guess they were so offended by her beauty, that they actually painted her, painted her face a whole lot of shades darker than what she really was. Why? It was because that's the way that white America saw us as people. We weren't really people. So when those rare chances that we did get to be on the silver screen, we had to be on there in their terms. Sad as it may be, that is the fact. So I want to bring to light a lot of the lost history, the lost performances, the lost work, of some of these stars of the golden era that didn't get there just do. Here's, I wanna read a statement that uh, Teresa, a quote that she wrote herself. It said, I never had the chance to rise above the role of maid in Hollywood movies. My color was against me any way you look at it. The fact that I was not hot stamped me either as uppity or relegated me to the eternal role of stooge or ser servant. My ambition is to be an actress. Hollywood has no parts for me. That's sad. That is sad. So all of us that think 
they want to make fun of the step infected people and the ones, the, the little rascals, the Hattie McDaniels, the Louise Beavers. They paved the way. They paved the way for the Holly Berries and the Angela Bassett's and the Will Smith's and the Denzel Washington's. All of these actors did this so that we as people of color can stand on their shoulders and see the work that could be done. Some of these actors could have been fantastic, you know, and it's sad to think of what, what caused all of this and why society would not allow people of color to rise. But that's the way it was. And um, Teresa Harris, she was perhaps known as the hardest working woman in Hollywood, appearing in close to 90 films, I said. And she worked at possibly every major studio and with some of the biggest stars ever. She was well respected by the studio executives. So when they needed someone to play the maid, they could always call Teresa. That's the way it was planned. And she wanted to make money and she did. So she had to do it that way. So I hope that this has really given me some light on this actress. I want to leave you with uh, another clip that I found uh, on YouTube. It's called 10 Things You Didn't Know About Teresa Harris. Find some of her movies. Let's find some of the roles that she has and let's really applaud the work that she's done. So, Hollywood actress Teresa Harris, let's honor her. Have a wonderful day and thank you again for listening to Classic Kalo. Also, check out my YouTube channel and uh, like and subscribe Classic at Classic Kalo Star. Have a wonderful day. Bye.